Macros in FL Digi can make your life super simple. Stick around and we'll get right to it. So in the simplest terms, a macro is a way to automate something that you're going to do on a regular basis. And I'm going to walk you through kind of a few of mine that I've got set up here on the screen. And then I'll show you guys how to program one of these macros for yourself. Let's start with uh, taking a look at these two over here, which is my info with traffic and my info. These are two different uh, macros that I'm going to use at the beginning of each of our meetups that we're doing each week. So if I just click the My Info button, you'll see that it's going to populate my call, my name, city, state, and my grid square. And then it's followed up with that caret R character, which is the receive character, uh, which will return your radio to receive mode after it's transmitted that information. Now, personal preference here, I do not ever, um, put a transmit at the beginning of my macro. That way, if I happen to have clicked the wrong macro, it doesn't just automatically start getting transmitted out. Again, that's just personal preference. If you want yours to start transmitting as soon as you click the macro, I'll show you guys how to do that in just a second. But this is just uh, something that I want to send out every week, and I don't want to have to type this information out. So being able to just click that macro button makes it super quick and super easy. I actually have one over here that's called Clear Transmit, uh, and that just clears this blue window right here. Uh, taking a look at the other one, if I happen to have traffic for the net, then uh, I'll just click that one that says My Info with Traffic. It fills out the exact same information, but it adds that uh, with traffic for the net at the end of it. So let's take a look at a basic example of uh, what's in one of these macros. On any macro that you see, you can simply right-click, and that will bring you into the Edit menu. Let me get this expanded out a little bit here on the screen, and then we'll start walking through it. One of the things, again, personal preference that I like to do is I add two blank spaces to the top of my macro. Those will get transmitted out, and it just makes it a little easier to read uh, on the receiving station. You'll see here that I've got my call, my name, my QTH, and my location, followed by the receive. Now, these are nothing more than variables that you can put in here. So instead of actually typing uh, KM4ACK, I can just use this variable called my call to plug that information in. Now, real quick, I'll show you where this information is found. I'm gonna close that out. Let's go back up to Configure and the Config dialog box. And if we look right here under uh, Operator Station, you'll see that information. So it's pulling uh, my name from here, my location from here, and then my grid square, and obviously my call sign. So that's where that information gets pulled in uh, when you're building these macros. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go to a blank screen, and let's just build a macro real quick from scratch. So I'm on uh, right here on this brown one. I'm going to right-click, which is going to open that macro up. Notice it is blank, nothing inside of this one. So if I wanted to uh, put my call out there first, you can simply highlight it and then click the green button to add it uh, over to the left-hand side, which is what's going to be transmitted. So I'm going to put a couple of blank spaces there. I'm going to highlight my call, and I'm going to uh, click the green arrow, which loads it in over here. Let's go down to the next line in the left window, and let's go ahead and put my location. So I'll highlight that, and then click the green arrow. And that just puts those two things in there, my call and my location. You can also manually type this stuff if you know what you're looking for, or if you know the name of a tag, you can go ahead and manually type that over here. So if I wanted to kick the radio back into receive mode after I had uh, transmitted that, I would just put the opening tag, RX, and the closing tag. If you didn't know that information, you can scroll down over uh, on the right-hand side and find that receive tag. You'll see it right here. So I could simply highlight it and then uh, click that green arrow and it will add it there. Now, the next thing you will want to do is uh, label your macro button. So we can call this one uh, video test. And 
boy, I cannot spell today. All right, once I've got that video test applied there, I'll click the apply button and you'll see that it populated right down here in the bottom where it just says video test. Let's go ahead and click close on that. Now, if I click on this video test button, it's going to auto populate uh, my call sign and my grid square. And again, you see that caret R, which is telling FL Digi to return to receive mode. Now, real quick, I promised to show you guys how to automatically transmit that macro. So I'm going to go back to that video test and I'm going to right click on it to bring up the editor screen again. Right here at the beginning, if I simply click on TX and then clicked on the green arrow, that would put the TX tag over here in my macro. So now it would go ahead, as soon as I click that macro button, it would start the transmission, it would fill in my call, and then it would fill in my location, which is my grid square, and then when it was done, it would receive. Again, don't forget once you make changes over here to go ahead and click the apply button and then close. And now your macro is updated, so it will auto transmit that information and then automatically go back into receive mode. Now, definitely take a time and explore these different tags that are available to you in FL Digi. I'm going to scroll down here closer to the bottom, and you'll notice that every single modem that we could possibly choose in FL Digi can be chosen right here. So let's go back to this tag that uh, we just created. And above the transmit, I'm going to, I tell you what, let me just take that transmit uh, tag out of there but let's add a modem in there instead. So I'm going to add this modem, Contestia 4250. I'll go ahead and click the green arrow to add that one over there, and then click Apply. Now, uh, oh, and i got to click the Close button. Now, when I click this video test, I want you guys to watch right down here. You'll watch the waterfall change, and then it's going to auto-populate that data into the transmit window. So I'll go ahead and click that. You'll see that it changed to the Contestia 4250 right here, and it's automatically populated the data that uh, we want to transmit. So that uh, is one other thing that you can do with a macro. A lot of capability in the macros. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that window, and then I'm going to go ahead and move back to the MT63 2KL by simply clicking this macro here. If you want to do like I've done and you just want to create a macro to change modems, let's right click on that and let's take a look at uh, that particular macro there. You'll see that it's turning my RSID on. It's um, I'm sorry, my transmit RSID on. My receive RSID is uh, being turned on and then it's changing the modem to MT63 2KL. Now, before we wrap this up, I do want to show you guys one other thing that I like to have here for convenience. Let's assume that I've got a call sign up here with an operator that I'm currently having a QSO with. So I've got KN4CCQ right up here at the top. I can click this macro right here to start the conversation. That's going to automatically fill in his call, DE, and my call. Now I can free type whatever I want down here below it. Before I transmit this, I'm going to click this macro here, which is this is KM4ACK, and then I could click the transmit receive button here. Let's take a quick peek at all of those macros. So the start conversation, uh, let's right click on that one first, and you'll see that all it is is call which is pulled from this information right up here. And then it puts in DE space and the my call tag, which is going to pull my particular call sign. Now you might be tempted just to type your own call sign out here, and that would work. However, if you shared this macro with someone else, uh, then it would be putting your call sign in there. If you use the my call tag, you can share your macro out with somebody else and it would pull their call sign in instead of your own. So that's the start of uh, the conversation right here. I'm going to right click this and right here you'll see that this one simply adds DE, my call, and the receive tag to the very end. Again, it doesn't transmit or receive anything 
I always want to manually start that and uh, just personal preference there. If you want yours to start automatically, by all means, go ahead. Uh, and then finally, the macro that I clicked was this one here, this T slash R. And I believe this is one of the default macros that comes uh, in FL Diginux. It's probably the only default macro that I have left. But this one uh, is simply TX forward slash RX. So if the radio is in receive mode, it will uh, start transmitting. If it's in transmit mode, then it will stop and go back to receive mode. All right, so there's an overview of macros and how we set them up and how we use them. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.